I, I, for, I forgot. <laughs> but what before the, you know, the, the graph, you know, the, the yeah. image? Well, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, title is How to Keep Drupal Relevant in the Git Based and API Driven CMS Era. You know, like having this long title make, you know, make you look smart. <laughs> Hopefully, I, it's, I mean, I can translate to that. Um, just one question. Sure. Um, are we sure that picking up with the LTAC mic? The what? Are we sure that recording is being picked up with the LTAC mic? No, the recording is on the thing, not this thing. No, what I'm saying, I didn't know if it was the audio. Huh? Without the mic, is the audio being recorded? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is. So, I mean, I've, I've been using this in all the camps, and okay. it's. Alright, just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, the mic is, is for like. Get it there, but I mean, I think I might. So, well, thank you for coming to this session. And I'm talking about, you know, Drupal and all some new technologies like Gatsby, which is a new thing, you know. And well, first, uh, my name, I'm Jesus Manuel Olivas. You can find me on uh, JMOLIDS on Twitter, Drupal.org, GitHub, and some other like social networks. And well, first, I mean, I born in, in Mexicali. In Mexico City, Mexicali, in, you know, in Mexico. So Mexicali is, you know, this city, the twin cities with Calexico, which is funny thing with the name, you know, Mexicali in California and Calexico in Mexico. It's like, it's a really tiny town. Uh, <laughs> it's a twin city, but it's like, you know, it's pretty convenient, close to the border. I'm spending most of my time in the U.S. and Mexico, you know, going back and forward. And uh, so close to San Diego, love concert. So when I was younger, I spent a lot of time in San Diego. Nice weather, beautiful weather. Not like weather here is not good. <laughs> and well, as a company where we are, so we, I work for we know. We are a fully distributed company. We do a lot of we're like, you know, open source, web shop. We used to like sell I mean I mean to be a sell or sell as a Drupal company, but uh, starting like probably three years ago, two years and a half ago. We start moving into different directions, like not only Drupal, most like other things, you know, React, you know, Symfony, some more JavaScript projects. So yeah, and we're a fully, fully remote company. We have an office in Costa Rica. We don't really use that office at all, other than for Drupal camps, which I would invite you. I mean, it's a beautiful country. And it's about June, June, August. I mean, we don't have a date yet, but I mean, I mean uh, yeah. We, one of our partners, one of my partners live in Australia. Actually, live in Hobart, you know, very south of the very south. And, well, the rest of the team, it's spread all over, like, like, so in, well, even US, Mexico, Argentina, we're missing a little flag here. Well, again, as I told you, I mean, we started as a Drupal company, and it started doing way more things like Drupal, you know, like JavaScript things, like, you know, we did some Meteor apps in the past, React, a lot of React lately, some Gatsby as well. But wait, we start to, doing more and more things, more related technologies. And, and this is what is happening a lot. I mean, I, you can, I can see this. I mean, wait, I mean, every single time, more and more camps having more extensions of different topics, and this is what is happening. And related to the company, we, we really invest on community and contributing. I don't know if you're aware of this Drupal console project. So the three main maintainers of the project are within the company. So we like to contribute. And we've been contributing a lot lately to improving that Drupal and Gatsby integration. I will show you at the, at the end what we're doing. But yeah, so far, probably our most successful project is Drupal Console. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we start doing Drupal, you know, Drupal, Drupal, Drupal. And there is a point when, while working with Drupal, that you really want to solve everything with Drupal. Because you know Drupal is awesome, it's incredible, it's so flexible, but you know, there's a, point where you realize, do we already need Drupal for every single thing? I mean, salespeople say yes. <laughs> I mean, I've, you can figure it out, I mean, but again, once you start using something and you like get good at, at it, you start to, you tend to use for everything, resolve every single problem. And this is when we get to this, right? So when all we have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And you know, in the Drupal world looks like this. We have this, you know. <laughs> We have Drupal and we want to use Drupal to resolve every single problem. And there's, there are times we have like sites 
uh, maybe it's better to use something different, you know, another CMS, or maybe no CMS, go right through flat files. It's fine, I mean, if the project, it's, I mean, it's, it's a, if there's a good fit, just use it that. But yeah, how this start, you know, long time ago. Let's go back in time. How long the CMS has already been, like, existed for? 20 years, something like that? So, CMSs, I mean, you know, like Drupal and, and WordPress, I mean, I chose those because they're the, probably the most common ones. But it's like, CMSs, you know, exist for some reason. No? We require a tool to do everything, you know, enter content, publish content, you know. And maybe at that time it was okay, maybe at this time it's okay. But yeah, that was a long time ago, like 20 something years. Drupal is like 17, 18 years, but now, I mean, we're talking about. Wait, I mean, a few years before, you know, Drupal. I mean, you use one tool, or the same tool for, you know, doing the content entry, making that content, like, public, and, you know, exposing the content, and, well, by how, the, depending on, you know, how you work, experience, sometimes, you know, say, you know, I just want to try something different. You're still using Drupal, but how about decoupling the front end, you know, it's like, let's use Drupal and something else to render in this. I mean, still using the, you know, the Drupal theming system, but I can start using like way more advanced techniques, you know, like something like Pattern Lab. Are you aware of that? Atomic Design System allows you to decouple, you know, Drupal from theming system. You're still using the rendering part of Drupal, but that's fine. And it's, and it's, I mean, it's good. It works for us. We've been using us uh, in several projects. It's good experience. Some people tend to think it's a little more overcomplicated than it's needed, but I mean, it works. You have to be careful because, I mean, if you miss something, you might be, you know, messing with your, you know, the caching system of Drupal, I mean, it's fine. Just be careful. But, you know, besides that, we've been hearing a lot about traditional headless Drupal, or the headless Drupal. But in this case, I want to call this traditional headless Drupal. So what it is? So we have this Drupal site, where we turn on JSON API, or GraphQL endpoints, and expose that data. And then you use a tool like React or Vue, for consuming that data and somehow, you know, do all the rendering blocks, right? So let's say we use Drupal for content entry, then a module like JSON API or GraphQL for exposing that data, and then using React or Vue for pulling data and, you know, do all the rendering pieces. And it's, and it, it's great, it works fine, but at some point you still need to have your Drupal site alive, right? You cannot disconnect the Drupal site, which is totally, Okay. But now that we are using this approach, you're gonna start thinking, you know, why if I don't need Drupal? What if this thing doesn't require all this complexity? Can I use something else? Yeah, we've been there. But we've been using, I mean, depending on the project, why not use Symfony and the API platform? The API platform, it's something similar, it's kind of distribution of Symfony. Think about like, the couple thing that allows you to consume Symfony through either REST or GraphQL. Similar, pretty similar, what you can get with, with a headless Drupal distribution. And again, it works fine, it works perfect, but it's still, you still need to have your Drupal, I mean, your Symfony site alive, your API site alive, because your React application or review is like pulling data live from that site, and it works fine. That's, that's one case. But you know, what if, what if, or which challenges do you have while working with something like this? Again, just recapping, we're still having this Drupal site alive, or the Symfony, and obviously Symfony, and also PHP, and database, and the whole, you know, stack there. So, which challenges do we have? Do, do we, like, have on, on that case? Oh, so we have, we need to, you know, make sure our site is performant, make sure our site is, is reliable, you know, because, the, more, the most complex your site is, the most, you know, pieces you have, you have to take care of. Then you have to worry about security, you know, updates, patches, you know. You know, Drupal Ganon, it, you know, it happens twice. <coughs> and then we have, you know, hosting system. And, and how this looks like in, in, a, in a more like, like shiny icons way. So we have this, you know, we have our website. You know, this our website is running either Drupal, rendering the thing, or, you know, React rendering the, the thing, you know, React, view. And it's in this case I'm showing like Drupal right here, but you could you can replace this with something else, exposing an endpoint. So someone it's 
loading your site, then in the browser, then it needs to go to this particular server, then the server needs to connect with the, uh, let's say, CMS, Drupal slash WordPress slash Symfony, and then from there, needs to go to the database, you know, pull data, you know, finding out which route you want to call, go to the routing system, you know, making sure the route exists, going to the database, pulling the data, going back to the CMS, and either, you know, sending, using the rendering system of Drupal, or sending that, exposing that API, you know, or that endpoint. And from there, your visitor can load the site. And can you imagine, this is expensive because it travels a lot and you do, I mean, go to into too many pieces here and there. And how this looks like about re reliability. So we have something like this, we have, you know, Apache or Nginx, I mean, it's up to you, which flavor do you prefer? Same as like storage, MySQL, MariaDB, or like Postgre if you want to, I mean, it's, it's up to you. And then we have PHP. It's like the most basic stuff, right? You can get for getting that thing running, either WordPress, Symfony, or, or you know, Headless tool. But what if, what if you require to add some hashing layers? Because, you know, this thing is not working properly. We require like more performance site. I mean, even when Drupal has this great caching layer, we end up adding more resources. You know, let's burnish your Redis. Have you seen that before? You know, let's add more stuff because let's make our site more performant, you know. But the more pieces we add, the more complex it becomes. But what if, what if we are using the, uh, you know, a headless thing? Now we require something else. We require Node.js, another server, right? So we have, you know, we have the Apache or Nginx, then we have, you know, the storage, which in this case, we can also use MongoDB, why not? You know, document storage, the schema list thing, you know, and then we have PHP and Node.js, and we still have Varnish and Redis because we need all these extra caching layers. But, you know, this is not enough. I have seen things like that, you know. Why don't we just bring RabbitMQ to the things here and there, and we just bring all these, you know, graphical endpoints to communicate to here and to all the pieces we have in the back, because, you know, some people or some projects eh, think it's required or it is required, right? But then all this complexity just turns into like way, you know, way, way more things to take care of. So think about security. When you have this stack, the more pieces you have in your stack, the more pieces you have to take care of, right? You know, more software is loaded in your servers, more updates you need to do, more patches you need to run. And it's not only that, you also, you also, I mean, have this, um, I mean, platform or Drupal core dependencies or Symfony bundle dependencies, all these PHP projects that you rely on. So you need to take care of all this complex stack, but it also have to take care of updating your, your project. And it also, think about a Drupal site. You know, we have, we have a module for that. So every single need we have, we can rely on a module. So now it's, it's not only core dependencies, so it's also a module. But whenever you use mod, we use modules, sometimes those modules have third party libraries, you know, like PayPal. So we load the module, then the module loads this library, and the library is also a state, I mean, gets downloaded on my, on my server, right? So there's more things to track, right? It's only the, comp the, stack, the stack is complex, and then all the platform is all complicated, it's complex as well. And how all this, all, I mean, overcomplicated the stack, and uh, all these different pieces of software, I mean, affect my whole thing somehow, yeah. Because, you know, managing a complicated or a complex stack is not an easy task. It requires either knowledge of all those technologies, you know, I need to know about servers, DNS, caching layers, you know, what else, backups, automation, you know, all this. Why don't you just bring continuous integration to this thing, you know? All this complex is like getting way more and more advanced. And the more complex your stack is to support, the more expensive, right? Because it, it gets more things to take care of. And you require more server resources to, to run those things. Well, I mean, let's talk about what can we do for this. For a moment, let's talk about, let's think about having or using a setless, I mean a headless CMS mm, through a, another platform provider. Let's think about, for this case, let's forget about Drupal, you know? This is not Drupal thing, you know, no Drupal. There are tools, you know, like Contentful, GraphCMS, Sanity, 
prismic, you know, there's way, way too many things, you know. Those platforms allow you to have this kind of content modeling that you can get from Drupal. I mean, out of the box, without maintaining uh, that particular, you know, Drupal site. I mean, I mean, if it that works for a project, it's it's totally fine, it's totally okay. And we can keep using React and Vue for the rendering part. So we manage all the storage through that platform as a service. That platform service provides you with a graphical interface. And that graphical interface allows you to create content models, kind of like a custom field, you know, kind of like Drupal, but it's, it's, I mean, different platform, different service. And again, we can keep using React and Vue for the rendering part at this time. You know, in the end, can you see where we are going? You know, we're trying to decouple the back end from the front end in order to have what on the, on the front end. I mean, what's React and Vue? It's only like flat files, right? So we're getting to a point that we want to have as an end result, like something more simple to to host, right? Why don't we just go to the very beginning? You know, what what will be a good reason for using flat, maybe flat files? Because they are, they are easy to you know to host. Basically, you take those files, put them into a CDN, and you know, out of scale, you know, without all the complexity. And uh, though, I mean, you can just have those files committed in your repository. It's kind of it's so simple. It's you have all this content, you stage content, you know, same as you state configuration. Think about that, but for content, you know, can I get my content into files? I can stage those. That's fine. So what it means, you know, everything in all this new again. So we are getting back to the beginning. Well, what if, what if, now that we are moving into that direction, what if you go right through those tools? I mean, let's remove, let's remove that. Let's remove all those platforms as a service. Let's go right to straight files. There are a few projects in the world that can help you to do that. Like Hugo, there is Jekyll, and there is Caspi. You know, you know Caspi, you know, like, this new thing, it's shiny, it's beautiful. And the Hugo is, is Go, is based on Go, Jekyll is uh, Ruby, and Gatsby is React. But basically, similar approach for each one of those tools, allow you to have you know, static files or flat files in your system, allow you to having those files and running a build process could convert those files or turn those files into a final result, which is your site. And then your site could be hosted somewhere else, like CDN, you know, whatever, whatever you want, I mean, whatever you want it. But yeah, the problem with these tools is like, we, by, I mean, by using those tools, we are missing something. We are missing that, you know, that shiny graphical user interface we are used to. And it's kind of hard for people, you know, give them access to that and telling them, you know, go open those files, you know, those, I mean, empty files, use, you know, I know you can use BIM, BI, or you know, and then just, or, or any editor, like you want to, text editor, change things there, then save it, then go to the file system, git add, git commit, git push, you know, it's, it's not easy task. So, we are missing the piece that Drupal used to provide, you know, this shiny graphical user interface. So then, what I think, why don't you, why don't we try to, to provide, to improve that, you know, the user experience, just providing a graphical interface, you know, using a Git-based CMS. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Let's keep using Hugo, uh, Gatsby, or Jekyll, but then provide a uh, graphical interface in order to use those, right? So there's, there's uh, platforms and services like Netlify, Forestry, or Cloud Cannon that allows you, that provides you a graphical interface to manipulate those flat files in the cloud, and they take care of automatically of Whenever you change something, committing that change, send that all those changes to your repository on GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever you want, you have that, right? So it's nice, you know. It's, I mean, it's a really nice thing to have. But at some point, we're used to Drupal, or or user, I use Drupal, or all salespeople is still selling Drupal. So yeah, let's try to figure out how can we do something similar with Drupal. Well, why don't we use Drupal to provide a graphical interface? And let's make sure all the content is Git based or maybe use a API driven as an API driven team. Well, Drupal has a project that is called Tom, T O M E, 
which basically take your Drupal site and content and turn it into a static site. You just run a CLI command that could be part of your, you know, of your like pipeline continuous integration process if you want to. Take care of getting all that content in your Drupal site and uh, render, create this static file version of your site. It's kind of like, you know, it's not like that, I mean, for those who are aware of like Bootstrap module on Drupal 7, who creates like HTML version of your site, it's kind of like that, way more, way more than this. And this module has a really nice feature of exporting and importing content. So basically take all your content and export that JSON files, then you can reuse them if you want later on. So I have seen things like, and, uh, and we have actually built some proof of concepts using only the export, the export import kind of mean functionality of this module and use a tool like Gatsby for reading all those JSON files and rebuilding a site, you know, site. And why, why I go back to Gatsby? Because by using this module, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the module. The module is great. You end up having like a basic, you know, HTML thing. I mean, yeah, obviously you can inject JavaScript or make it React. But by using something like Gatsby, you can use the same content, the same Drupal, I mean, provide this graphical experience, user experience, but render a React application. Which you will, you will have, uh, the benefit you will have is something like that is not, is not real, it, this is not static, only static, because you can have, you know, React has this on the mount event where you can pull data from different APIs and you can rehydrate your page, you can rehydrate the state of your components and your component will show like like live data or will update it, right? It's not only like a static files. And whenever we use something like Tom, we only get you know, HTML, CSS, I mean, it's doable, but it's way more work. But wait, can you see what we're trying to do? So we're trying to decouple the content management and the tutorial experience from the, hours, from the end result, from the production environment. So we're getting close. I mean, I'm showing you different things, different ways to do that. We're getting close, we're getting there. It's going to happen sooner or later. So what can we do for this? Oh, what's, I mean, what's the, uh, what's the approach we have taken in this particular case? I mean, after all this journey in learning about different systems and different tools, well, we are using something like this. We're using Gatsby, you know? Gatsby, it's a, you know, it's a React application that allows you to pull data from different sources and, I mean, rendering or building this React application, which is, people tend to call it static, but again, it's React, so you can do anything you can do with React application. And again, Gatsby is, is you know, it's, uh, it's login is blazing fast site generator for React. Actually, they removed the static word from here because it's no longer static. And, but we have something like this. Let's, let's take a look at this image and think about what we're going to do, what we wanted to do. So we want to still have this way of providing uh, a headless EMS because it provides a better editorial experience. So we have three, I mean, three users or three actors here. The content editor, you know? Let's keep providing Drupal as a uh, content storage so you can use the, you know, all this content types thing. You can use, you can keep you taking advantage of what Drupal is good for and provide this as a tool for for your content editors to enter content, right? That's good, that's good to go. And then we also have these modern tools like React, you know, JavaScript, all these shiny new things that you can provide to your developers to build the end result. So basically you can use React and you know, and it's as a company owner, I can tell it's easier to hire React, I mean, developers who know React well than developers who know the Drupal theming system well. Might be a shift on market, and obviously, I mean, I've been talking to other people who have businesses, like, youngest people, does not like Drupal way too much? Like, you know, because it's not, it's not in high with JavaScript and React, probably, I don't know, probably because it's, they feel like it's an old technology, I mean, I have no idea why, but it's, it's easier for us to hire people who knows, I mean, React and JavaScript. But then we have the final actor in this, diagram to so your site visitor. So basically we are making, by using these tools, we are providing a final result, which is fast, it's performant, it's easy to host, and you can just basically get the end result of the build process 
and just drop it to ZDN, and you know, there's no more night nightmares. There is like Drupal get on, that's fine, I can fix it. I mean, maybe Saturday I'm here, there's a Drupal, okay, that's fine, I can fix it Monday. <laughs> and I get back. Well, and this is what it is. You know, we have the content editors, we have the people who is working on the, uh, on, like developers working on the site, and we have the site editors. Again, so we are kind of decoupling the experience, providing each one of them the right tool for the job. But how, how Gatsby works, how it looks like. You know, we have this. Gatsby is like something like this. You know, It's a React application that has this building process. But Gatsby, um, one of the benefits of the beauty of Gatsby is it allows you to pull data from different sources. You can pull data from the file system. You can pull data from any, like, like CMS. Or you can pull data directly from a database, right? It's like, this is, this is nice. Or you can have, like, multiple entry points for consuming data. You can, have, you, you can even have like a WordPress site, a Drupal site, flat files, a uh, GraphQL endpoint, and you can com get data from all of those and combine them and then, you know, just build one site as an end result. And this happens because Gatsby pull data from all those different sources. Actually, Gatsby see the file system as a data source. Pull data from all different sources and create this GraphQL endpoint in memory while you are on development time. So it means you have access to this GraphQL endpoint while, while developing your site, where you can query and create your pages, and that GraphQL endpoint is available on the, on the build process as well. So basically, get data from this Drupal, from this WordPress, from this GraphQL endpoint that client has, and we I mean, you have no idea what it is there. It's just a GraphQL endpoint. Get it from there. I mean, maybe the footer, the header, it's, it's fine to have it on a static files, so I just drop those as JavaScript files or Markdown, pull all that data, I mean, I mean, have those on this GraphQL, I mean, in memory, and just work, make sure everything is fine, and then build a final React application as flat files that you can deploy to a CDN. And this looks like this, you know? We're, let's replace CMS by Drupal, and let's replace a database by a GraphQL endpoint. And it's totally fine, I mean, we have done this, we have this, Mongo DB, I mean, or as document storage, and then we why don't we then we just build this GraphQL, I mean, and we just write the resolvers. We're all, we're all set. We can pull data from different sources. And how can you do this? How can you do this? I mean, while we when we start working with Gatsby and with Drupal, probably after mm, for last year, early last year, we start playing around. I mean, I wish I played with Gatsby 1.0. And it was fine, but it wasn't until back camp, not 2018, 17, that I, I mean, I went to a session and the uh, Kyle, the project creator, he was mentioning about Gatsby and he was showing how it was easy to connect to Drupal, you know, about using this Drupal source plugin. And I just, I mean, I, I mean, I really like the ideas of playing with it, but we figure out, we figure out. There's some missing pieces as well. We try to take it, we take advantage of Gatsby. You know, Gatsby has this way to, well, you know, by, by reading, I mean, markdown content and has this pre-process similar to Drupal. Actually, there's a lot of things that looks alike between Gatsby and Drupal. It's might be because Kyle used to do Drupal at some point, you know, the creator of Gatsby. It's might be because Kyle worked for Pantheon. And it might be because Kyle grew the first Dashboard Pantheon, he knows Drupal. So he understands content types, he understands all this. You know, Drupal is used for pulling data, migrate, mig you know, migration scripts. Might be, might be what it is. Yeah, well, so we figure out, we find out there are some things to polish on the process. So we start working on it and we want to contribute it back in order to make it easier for people to use that. So we grow this Drupal distribution, which is called Drupal Olina, I don't know how you pronounce this. How do you pronounce this thing? Boina? Boina? Let's call it Drupal. Boina? <laughs> <laughs> so now we have a new word in the Drupal lingo. <laughs> That's never allowed. <laughs> Actually, do you know that name says it's available on Drupal.org? How'd you get it? Yeah. Well, this is a distribution. It's, I mean, it's out of the box, pre-packaged with everything you need to have. It's headless Drupal, it has JSON API, has, and some other modules that I will, I mean, I will mention in, I mean, in a in the coming minutes, lights, but we are contributing back. So, 
it's getting this project working in your system, just you know, git clone it, you know, copy this environment variable. And we are providing this uh, with a Docker compose file. So if you know, if you have, you're running Docker in your computer, make it easy for you. If not, well, running as usual, you run your thing, your Drupal site. I mean, there is an Ahoy, this project called Ahoy, it's basically a make file, probably glorify version of a make files, allows you to define commands in a YAML definition and then register those in those high for you. So we have Ahoy app, which is basically Docker Compose app, you know, and la 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 la. So in order to save you some time, we grow those, we drop a Ahoy file there, so make your life easy. Then, you know, Ahoy Composer install, get all these Drupal dependencies, and finally Ahoy Drupal, Boina install, which is a custom command, Drupal console command. Because why not? I mean, we grow Drupal console, let's make part of this. You can use Rush if you want to, Rush is there. I mean, it's, we're using the Drupal project composer, and we just add a few things here and there. It's a profile there as well, so you can extend it if you want. And so that's the Drupal part. But how about the Gatsby part? Gatsby has something that's called starters, which is pretty much like a distribution. It's like a flavor of Gatsby. And we also have this one, and we also call it like Boina, because you know, we like the name, so we call it Boina. And in order to get this in your system, Gatsby has ZLI, so Gatsby new, then you give it a name, where the directory will be, and then just pull to the repository. And from there, you know, copy the environment variable, and you change the host name if you want to. So basically here will be the, your Drupal site, so this Drupal Boina that developed will be this Drupal site, or the Drupal site you are, you know, get this one, put it on Pantheon, or Akias, or DigitalOcean, wherever you want. And finally, run Gatsby Develop, and it will build a Gatsby site for you, pulling data from that Drupal distribution, which is out of the box, provide you with a wizard way for editing, you know, for providing markdown. So, we have something like this. We have the end result, something like this. We have, you know, Drupal distribution, which is like JSON API friendly, who will be, you know, I mean, providing data for your Gatsby, for Gatsby application, and this end result, or the end build will be a React app. And uh, we have something like this. After you have building your, your Gatsby site, <laughs> you can turn off your Drupal site. You don't need it anymore. I mean, you need it later on for doing more content entry. But if you want to, you can turn it off. Or even just, you know, get a dump of the database and destroy the server. <laughs> Why not? You know, you can, I mean, clean it up again. I mean, if you like complexity, just create a Terraform script, you know, create a droplet, wherever you are, you know, or a machine on AWS, and just bring your database backup and just spin up your server. I mean, because I mean, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you don't have to turn off your site, but you can. What I really want to say about this is like, you can limit the access to your site to only content editors and the build tool you are using for, I mean, accessing, I mean, for building your GAP site, right? But again, if you want to, Feel free to touch, I mean, I mean, turn off your site. What do we get from here? Remember I talked about performance? So once we have this, we have this React application that we can use host into a hosting platform, as with, with a like CDN, and it will scale, it will like, you know, it will be being served closer by the computer that is accessing your site, all, you know, all these things that we maybe don't want to worry about at this very moment. And what will be my stack? I mean, what if I want to host my site? Well, my stack will be reduced to this. It's not yes. I don't need PHP because I am not running Drupal. I am running Drupal on development mode and on, on the build process. I don't need MariaDB or, or MySQL. I don't need a database other than in development mode or while building the site. And I don't need all these extra layers of caching and caching. Because what it happened, so whenever we are using Drupal, you know, and adding all this, you know, varnish and, you know, and this Redis, we are trying to, what are we trying to do? Trying to provide a, a static site for the visitor, right? Why do we just don't get, or we don't provide the static site from the early beginning? I mean, 
it's probably, I mean, probably worse for you, probably not. The thing is, um, you will be serving a static site, which is like, I mean, there's, I mean, it's generated through a build process. And there are some questions. Like, what if I want my users to log in? What if I want my users to access and like authenticated content? There, there's a way to fix that. I mean, how about my web forms? I want my web forms. Yeah, there's a way to get there. So which challenges you will have while trying this approach? Well, you need to provide markdown content to Gatsby in order to take advantage of Gatsby Remark plugin, which is basically, again, similar to what we have in Drupal, when you have a WYSIWYG, text filtering, you know, add this tag and gets converted to something else. As this media tag and it's converted into a, like a media entity or video or something, it's, it's just the same thing. It's just exactly the same thing. You provide a markdown file with, with, with content and it's smart enough to figure out, oh, this is a video, this is a Twitter link, this is a something. So I can do this, I can, you know, take this and make an embed of Twitter or embed of like CodePen or anything that means that I want to. And if it's, I mean, actually, same as, there is a module for that, there is a plugin for that on Gatsby. And another thing we need to do for that, Gatsby has this pre-processing images on Markdown, which is great, allow you to create different versions of your images and you serve that image right for the right size of your display without doing nothing other than providing them an image within a markdown content. So in order to do that, okay, the first thing in order to do, in order to make Drupal like markdown friendly, we grow the module, it's called Toast UE uh, Editor, right? So it's there, just get it. Actually it's part of the distribution, so you don't have to download it. I mean, if you try the distribution, the Bohemian distribution will be there. And also, the, or Gatsby Starter, it also has this Gatsby Remark Drupal plugin, which is the one who allows you to take advantage of the, all the image preprocessing from Gatsby out of the box, so you don't have to do nothing, or even add this in your, in your Gatsby project, or use the starter we provide. And finally, uh, you might be want to deploy your site to something like Netlify, you know, Alex? And then we build a module to allow you to go to Netlify, create a webhook, copy the URL, paste it in your Drupal site, and you can say you can configure. I want to build or run builds every single time that I save a node, which is so aggressive. I think so, but it's up to you. Or you can say, you know, I want to run this on whenever run gets executed, or I want to have a link on the you know on the toolbar that allow me to click here whenever I want to. And I mean, it's fully customizable, and it's there. It's called build hooks. You know, build hooks. And also, it's part of the. Uh, you know, Drupal distribution. So, out of it's there, it's already there. Okay, let's go to the next, I mean, challenge. You were thinking about, well, now that my site is a static, it's running in a CDN, and I don't, I don't have server side. How can I? How can I? I mean, have this form, you know, because I mean, it's web form. You know, I like to have form where people enter. I mean, email. So I can send like messages that on like a newsletter, or just you know have a question. I want to resolve that. Well, there are options for web forms. Most of the time, when while working with Drupal, even you know having a web form, we end up adding a I mean custom custom functionality to sending all the payload to an external server like a CRM system or somewhere else. So. With this, in this case, you can directly just point your form to that CRM system endpoints, you know, just set, set the URL where you want to send your payload and that data will be automatically sent it there. Or if you want something like more, I mean, custom, you can write a serverless function. We just did that the other day for a project, you know, this is a Gatsby site, but we want people to register to a newsletter. So basically, yeah, you enter your email, hit send, then we have this serverless function, which basically, it's not available until you require the run, then you require the URL, the server, this function is, this gets run. You get the payload, extract the email, the data, you know, call MailChimp if you want to, you just register the user, and boom, the, the, server, the server function dies again, and you only pay for 35 seconds of usage. Um, I mean, it's up to you. Or you can use any other platform as a service for, for forms, I mean, I mean, uh, 
for, I mean, for resolving forms. There are plenty of those outside, right? What about e-commerce? I mean, there's tools for that, like Shopify has an API that you can easily connect. There's Drupal, I mean, there's got the plugins for that. There's something called, Sel I mean, Saltify. There's, I mean, a, you know, acronym of like product experience management, basically it's a headless CMS kind of tool. There are plenty of those, you can use those, either by a um, Gatsby source plugin for pulling, you know, the products in your page and providing your API endpoints to submitting, you know, the card in the end. And for processing like payments, there is Stripe, PayPal, and you know, and then you use consume that as an iframe in your site. So basically, you are delegating all that functionality, all the security, all that, I mean, you don't have to worry about that because that is resolved by the external, I mean, provider. And well, most common thing is comments, you have discus, you can also have the serverless function, to get the payload and store somewhere else. I mean, you can even go back to the Drupal site if you want, you know, from there, if your site is alive, if you don't turn it off before. But yeah, so by using this approach, what is gone and what we can keep using. Twig is gone, sorry about that. You spent last two years, so the last two years learning Twig. If you move to this approach, Twig is gone. Well, I mean, but you, what you learn with Twig, you know, passing key values and rendering into a template system, it's gonna help somehow. It's gonna help, it's gonna help. Somehow. Somehow, but you know, <laughs> the renderer is gone. That almost makes me cry. <laughs> Team layer is gone. Timber processing is gone. You can keep using views and expose that as a JSON, you know, for a use case and API if you want to. But if not, you know, you can use GraphQL within Gatsby to pull data here and there, filtering and all that. It's you can do that. And but what you can keep using? Well, since we are using Drupal, we can keep using Drupal for the data modeling structure, you know, adding custom fields, making our content types, you know, as I mean, as we want it, adding fields here and there, relations, all that. We can keep using that. Then, you know, we can use, we can take advantage of the content editor, you know, capabilities of Drupal, with the way, the thing. Also, you know, moderation, scheduling, you know, public publications, all that, it's, it's, it's still there because we're still using Drupal. It's not like Drupal is gone, it's half gone. I mean, in order to tell Gatsby which URL will be this page, let's just pipe out of it because it's great for that, you know, provide, take the title and then, you know, get this, you know, turn into maybe URL, that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. Keep using that. And one module that we add to the distribution and we find like really helpful is site settings. I don't know if you're aware of this. Provide you a new entity where you can add fields. So basically like the site name, you know, the disqueues, I mean, short name, the Twitter handler, all the data that you want to pass to Gatsby. So you, so you don't have that, I mean, for, I mean, I mean on, on the Gatsby configuration, just, provide that from Drupal. You can use the site settings module, allow you to, it's a fieldable entity, and just expose, get exposed with JSON API because you're exposed to all those entities, all this content, right? And we're talking about Gatsby, which plugins you should have, or, I mean, are part of this distribution. Also, we have the Gatsby source Drupal, which is the one who connects to Drupal, pull data, la la la. Create this graphic, I mean, GraphQL thing, you know? Gatsby remark Drupal for making sure Gatsby understand we are sending Markdown because Gatsby was created to read Markdown file. So don't tell anyone that basically this module, you know what this plugin is doing? It's letting, you know, it's, you know Gatsby, this is a file, even when it's not. But Gatsby, okay, this is a file, then I will process it as a file. Then all the rare, all the rare, the remark, I mean, mark, I mean the remark processing, which is the Markdown preprocess, it happens. And all the image preprocess happens. And this module also that takes care of mapping images from your know, website, something to a path that Gatsby understands, so can use it from, from the uh, image that previously downloaded from your Drupal site. And you know, there's some other module like Remark External Links. It's the same as External Link from Drupal. So there's a lot of modules or plugins who mimic the functionality we have in Drupal. So embed a video, uh, embed like a tweet, I mean a tweet, things like that. There are a lot. If it's not, well, I mean, it's an open source project, and we can contribute the same thing that we contribute with Drupal. In the end, in the end, it's like, what I wanna, the point I'm gonna get there is like, you know, use, but choose the right tool for the job. I mean, 
If we want to keep using Drupal, I mean, it's fine as a monolith. It's totally fine. It's up to you. I mean, it, if it works, it's it's okay. But there are some there are some projects who can benefit of something like this. Either JSON API, my Drupal is always alive, pulling data, or it might be something like way more like focus on Jamstack. You know, going like the fully decoupling Drupal, so being able to shoot down my Drupal site if I want to. But you know, it's like choose the right tool for the job. Again, it's only the approach we've been been following lately with good results. So again, thank you for this. I mean, you can pick me on the event. I will publish the slide at the link on the note page and uh, also tweet it, tweet about it. So you can you can follow the slides. I mean, later on. And any comments, questions? So yes, let me know. I will be, I mean, around, so, yeah, go ahead. Does this approach change the way you think about content modeling? Hmm. Not at all, because you're still using Drupal content modeling, you know, adding custom fields. I mean, you have to, okay, you have to think about how you do the content modeling, because, I mean, what I see lately is people is, is using and abusing paragraphs. Because it is, then you see this paragraph within this paragraph within this other paragraph within this other paragraph and then another paragraph. I mean, if you <laughs> abuse the system, somehow you're gonna have the same hard time you had with Twig, but I mean, inside, I mean, React. I mean, I mean, it's, it's up to you, but I mean, again, you, the, thinking about content modeling is just the same because you're still using the same tool for, for that part like Drupal, content types, entities, whatever you, you wanna use. Yes? What limitations are you aware of? Well, I mean, it's like we, what probably what you're gonna miss is that Drupal user access, you know, control that you can have. Because Drupal is, is pretty famous for that. You, it's easily to configure which page, pages you want to see, but it's only for authenticated content, right? In this case, you can provide that. You can provide an authentication. Actually, there are services like, like Out Zero or, you know, like Firebase from Google that allow you to authenticate from different, like Twitter, Google, and then from there, once you are, allow you to limit the access to certain routes. So basically, you will need to somehow build that user access control, if you want to, to provide private content. Again, this is a React application, so anything you can do with React, you can do with this, you know? You can have private sections, you can have private data, or pulling data from particular endpoints, which are behind a a token, so basically you require user to authenticate, get that token, and use that token for the upcoming you know, calls to an external API. So that will be a good thing. So how, but how much of your sites are like for like, non-authenticated users? Yeah, well that's why I'm, I'm, within that, uh, if they're not authenticated, then it sounds like a good solution. Yeah, another limitation is if they are, Every single time you rebuild, the whole site gets re gets built. It. So there is there is, I mean, there is um, there, I mean there's a known nature like like uh, incremental builds and uh, somehow I mean, Gatsby people is aware of that and they're there's a known nature they're working on it. So it's that's an one. If your site gets too big, somehow it could be slow. But what you can do is break your site in different builds. You know, like let's. I mean, if the site gets way too, it's way too bigger, why don't you create this multi-site if you want to use the same Drupal, have the same Gatsby thing, and just build it to pieces, then you are like limiting the, the number of nodes that you will be using for rendering your site every single time, every build. I mean, that's, I mean, that's another, I mean, known issue, and that's the possible solution is that break your sites into like smaller sites. I mean, but when I think about like, this is like when we have a hundred, like gazillions of, of Notes, right? Yes. Um, sorry, sorry if I missed this, but um, where are people who are doing Gatsby? Where are they hanging out online? Like, where, where are people asking questions and getting answers? Actually, they are really, really pretty responsive on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, and what else? They have you know, GitHub issues where you can ask questions. There is a, uh, a Spectrum channel, which is the chat they use for it as well. So you can go Spectrum and then. Look for, search for Gatsby and their chat for that. 
Or you can ask me any questions. I'm happy to help. Yes? Um, so it doesn't sound like you like paragraphs too much. So how do you... No, no, no. <laughs> don't get me wrong. No, no, no. I don't like people abusing paragraphs. I totally agree. Uh, how are you solving the problem of injecting structured content in the middle of other content? Like, you'd be able to solve the paragraphs. Well, I mean, at this point, it's you can create something custom or like, I mean, since we won't be using like, like loading all this part of like way too many times, if it's like, if you don't require like cardinality, maybe field collection works, I mean, because you don't have the performance hit you can probably have in the other case, but you have, you require like multiple instances of that. Well, I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with paragraph. It works. Just use, use carefully. Are you, are you, is there any markdown solution for, like, are you writing any custom markdown parsers to? Yeah, we, we wrote parsers for, for, uh, for the, the one for converting images into pads, Gatti pads, for Twitter, for embed like code pens, yeah. like slide decks, that, that yeah, kind of thing. That could be a solution. Yeah, it could be a solution. I mean, let, let me show you how this looks like. So if we go here, mm -hmm. yeah, -da -da. so this is how the uh, the Drupal site looks like. Ugh. So you have this, you know, this. Drupal site, which is pretty much the same content thing, then content, and we have this WYSIWYG editor, so you can have, you can either grow my line if you want to, or go in, you know, here and start typing things. But if you go here, the, the nice thing about this, you know, it's you can go somewhere in your thing, and you know, let's use media, because Drupal is great for having media, so I can do this, and have an image here, so like image, and go here, and my image is here. So whenever I, the next time I run a build, this image will be like mapped into like Gatsby pads and because the Gatsby takes care, takes care of downloading this, getting the image because of it's exposed through JSON API. So the only thing we do is that, that little trick that I told you know, Gatsby, you know, this is a file, use it as a file, you know, and then find the image. So we change the path on the fly. Because in regex, you know, when you have a problem and use regex, now you have two problems. And yeah, and that's, I mean, there's a few things here and there we grow to improve that, and I mean, we are more than happy to contribute, so feel free to use that Boina distribution and the stutter. And again, if you go to the, uh, the here's the stutter, the, uh, da, 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 and this is how the site looks like, you know, it's like this, it's a blog thing, you know, home. And we also, you know, we know people is gonna miss, you know, taxonomies, oh, we have that, or we have a, you know, integration for creating all these pages for your taxonomy thing, you know, here and this, there. I know people is gonna miss. I know I want to, my, I want my content to be published on, on, on Drupal, right? So what I need to, I need to provide this XML. So let's go in Drupal Planet. I think it's this. Hopefully this is a, no. Mine is there. I don't know what the URL for the other one. Yeah, so I can, so we also pre-configure the Gatsby starter to expose your node, the node you tag as, you know, Drupal Planet to get in this RSS feed so you can register on, on Drupal.org so get, that content gets published there. So you don't have to worry about that. So taxonomy, I mean, you can mimic every, anything that you have on Drupal here. I mean, maybe you think, yeah, there's, maybe is there more work to do? But I mean, if you see a benefit on the end result, I mean, it's just worth it. I mean. Again, it's not like you have to, I mean, if you see the benefit on it. Well, yeah, you can embed like videos, you know, just click, paste that, you, the YouTube, I mean, gets the embedded, will get generated for you. Same thing for, for that. And just, just as a side note, it got is fast. It's really, really fast. Actually, it's done in a way, it's hard to make your site slow. It, it is, actually, without doing nothing, this is the Lighthouse report I get from my site. How, how much effort, sorry, we need to invest in make Drupal has this score. I mean, it's doable, but it's, uh, yes, question? Yes, I was gonna ask, how is the web accessibility for Gatsby? They just hire in, uh, for, I mean, Mars is just exactly. <laughs> she used to work for apps for Dixie systems. Like big game accessibility person, um, and they also switched over in the latest release to uh, 
which router? Which router, which is just, it's a different routing system than they used before. So like just the focus management is like thousands of times better than it was. So it's they still, there's a lot of stuff in there. You can still screw it up in front of you, just like anything else. But it was an issue, but they, they knew about it, so they are just taking taking them care of that. More questions? Again, feel free to ping me. Yeah, Scott? Why do I need React to use what seems like some kind of static site routing thing? Why is this so heavily pegged to React? I'm just curious. Well, I mean, it's... it's is it just it's a thing and it happens to... Yeah, it's, I mean, the, you know, the creator knew React pretty well, he okay. knew that. And the thing is, like, I mean, in the end, by having this React app, you can take advantage of all that you're like rehydrating components, you're pulling data on 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 deep mount or or on you know all that benefit that a uh, React app, app can give you. You know, like login user, you know, authenticate user using a serverless function, getting the token, you know, and just store the token somehow locally and use that and keep rehydrating my app. I mean, I mean, it's it is what it is. It's, And again, just feel free to ping me. I will stay here. I mean, I mean, we can probably discuss this with a couple of beers <laughs> at the after party. I'm at the party, and also I will be here tomorrow for the sprint. I mean, if you want to contribute to Drupal or my being to Gatsby, let me know. So, thank you. It's done.